All right, this is, in this uh, video, we're going to do the CSS so, um, for this golden ratio project. So we're trying to get to uh, a site that looks something like this. Um, and right now we, are, we have the content in the HTML, and we look something like this. And so um, we're just going to continue working t with uh, adding CSS to get this project going. And we're using the README document for this repo, this Project 2 repo, to provide instructions and a lot of help on getting the CSS in and understanding, you know, how the CSS brings about the visual changes that we're looking for. All right, so we're working through this README doc. We've got um, a lot of help here uh, to getting this styled. And we'll just start working through this. We'll bring up, there is a style sheet that should be attached to everything. We'll open that to the side. And we can begin by doing the reset. And let's label this. It'll help us, in case we have problems, figure out where we might have gone wrong. So first of all, we're going to, let's go to the readme here. We are going to, so I'm looking at the preview. It's a little easier to read there on the readme. Um, we're going to do a reset. So box sizing border box so that we can not be counting borders when we're doing our, our layouts and margin and padding zero so that it's initialized and we can have better control over that. So that would be our first step. Next step, um, we're going to add variables for color and font. So we've done variables before just looking at font, in, or sorry, just looking at color. And now we're going to add some variables for font. And again, this makes it easy for us to change our color scheme in one place. Um, the more that we can tag sections um, of code, chunks of code with, with um, and then and then be able to actually have variables within our CSS. So if I search for one of these, um, you can see that it's it's not these these names don't show up in your HTML. They only show up in CSS. But when your CSS starts getting really big, it's very helpful to have made variables where you can, so that it's easier to find and easier to. Uh, change. You only have to change it in one place. You don't have to go throughout your whole page. So here we're going to indicate the variables. And again, we've got it set up for both fonts and colors. Um, let's take a look next. We're going to apply fonts to major elements. All right, so in this case, we are going to do fonts font application. And we've got our H1s, footer, any any anchor tags in an H1 list item anchor tags. We're assigning our serif titles and then this is our own variable name. And then fig captions will be serif and paragraphs will be serif text. So we've kind of split out how we want to style these and we've used variables. So that will help with that. So at this point, we've done enough styling that we should be able to see some changes. So let's open up the page. Yeah, and you can see that we're seeing some um, sans serif here. Some, so we're getting some of our fonts in there, and that looks good. Um, we could also start uh, pushing our code. So. Here we're going to get add, get commit. CSS1. I'll just kind of number these for myself. All right, so we get that pushed out. So working kind of methodically like this through this styling will help you to keep from making errors or skipping anything. So we the next thing we want to do is brand. So I'll just mark brand in here. You could even use these numbers in there if it would help you in case you made a mistake and you wanted to get back to it. So in brand, we've got a brand color. And 
if the marketing department told us to change that color, it would be just a matter of changing the variable. So we're going to say text decoration none. And that gives us this color and removing all links. All right, let's now move on to five. We're going to set up mobile first grid layout. So the mobile first grid layout, remember we applied um, we applied this container class and the single call container class to our to, to encapsulate all of the main content in both in all of our pages. So two of the pages had a single call layout and two of them had sort of a, a layout with an aside. Um, and the container would handle that and the single call container would be the single column. Well, uh, setting up mobile first, we're going to have a grid layout and one fractional column. And when we set grid template columns to one fractional, basically we're just stacking things on top of each other. It's And this is what we want to happen in mobile, so that's how this will be set up. No media queries, just saying, hey, grid layout, one on top of the other, and a grid gap of five pixels. So at this point, that's not going to make too much of a difference in when we look at our page. Um, you know, there's a lot going on here in this, and we haven't got any background colors yet or anything, so it's hard to see. Let's add the next step. So now we're going to apply basic styles to container items. So again, we have these two main containers, the container and the single call container. And this greater than asterisk um, syntax in CSS means everything below these containers, everything contained in these containers. And we're giving it a color, a line height, and a background. And these are done colors with with our variables. So, um, and then in nav, we're giving some padding. The aside has some padding, and the footer has some padding. So these are just kind of, kind of just standard look and feel styles that we're giving to our pages. And now I think we'll see some things. Yes. So now that we have a background color, we can see that grid gap. You know, we still have kind of some a lot of work to do on the styling, but. Um, we are starting to see some changes there. All right, so the next thing that we want to do as number seven, apply some nav styling. So we'll, we'll set this up. And for this, um, you can see we're setting some background color. We And here we get into our actual nav tag and assigning the unordered list, you know, kind of clearing out the bullet points and removing the underlines on the anchor tags, setting up some, you know, basic uh, kind of clearing things out for the anchor tags and setting up, you know, how we would make, um, how, we, how we would want an active link to look. So we've got a, a, a special color assigned for the active links and we've already handed those you know, provided those out when we did the HTML and content section. So if we look at our page now, it's starting to look like a nav, although you can see we haven't taken care of the dealing with the hamburger nav and, you know, styling so that we get our hamburger nav only when we're in a smaller dimension and otherwise we get, we want to have a horizontal layout. So, um, but if we go, you can see that our active tab is working. Right. And I'm noticing my home tab isn't working. And let's see. Yeah, it's consistently not working. So let's look at the HTML on that. I think there might be something left out. So um, if I look at, say, media and yeah, so I, I when I copied and pasted, so this is the, the difficulty of copy paste is that it gets you can have an error spread out everywhere. So really, if I'm not on home, I don't really want to um, use that hash because that just says go to the top of the page essentially. And so I'm going to just put in home.html. And sometimes you'll see me use dot slash home. That just means starting here, go to home. I'm just going to keep it simple. So just home for home and 
And like if I'm on media, I could have put a hash for instead of saying media, but either one would work for this. So um, on Fibonacci, once again, let's say home. And that's not home, it's index.html. So let's fix that, yes. So index is, is our web default. Uh, so this is if you don't specify any page, the server will look for an index.html, and that's what we want it to do. And then the about page, once again, we want this to be index.html. So if we go try this out now, we, that goes home, Fibonacci, media, media, and on every page we can go home. So that's important. And also our golden ratio should take us home. So that we always want the brand to take us home. So that's looking good. All right, so heading back to the code, we're up to step eight. Why don't we do a check-in here? So get status. You'd be surprised how helpful these can be if you're trying to find out where you were last working well and roll back to it. So get push. All right, so at step eight, we're still working on layout, and now we're getting into a media query to allow us to change the, the layout at 600 pixels. So something bigger than a phone but less than a tablet. Usually you would probably be styling for three different sizes. Um, you know, if you're if you're doing a website, public website, um, but just for the sake of expediency and the time it takes to type and copy, and and we're we're just doing two levels, and so 600 pixels is our cutoff point. And in this case, we are styling with media queries. And so let's just and let's take a quick look at what we've got going. So here now we're getting into some of what we saw with the Holy Grail layout in the skills assignment where we are setting up um, repeating four across and then um, having any contain any container that we want to spread the whole width of the page horizontally, we give it the span of four but the section only gets a span of three, and that will allow our aside to sit next to it. So um, in our skills, we had a left nav and an aside, so our numbers were a little different. Um, but in this case, we're like chopping up the screen um, into four vertical columns, and we're having everything except sections span the full width. Uh, and then we're going to get our nav to lay out with inline block and give it, give them all a fixed width. We're setting up our toggle to not display at this, at, on a larger screen. So we, that, um, and that is our, our hamburger. And then um, we're giving a background image to our header. So that's a very faint image. If I find that here, let's see. Basically, the Fibonacci numbers. So if you can see that, it's kind of hard to see. We have our 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. And they just kind of fade into the background of the header. And so we also set that to no repeat and background 100%, 100%. So we want it to completely fill the header. So let's see what how, how this affected. Yeah, so you can see that we have have this kind of, it almost is skewed numbers in the header. We've now got this. Um, we don't have the actual content of the section laid out, but we do have our, our uh, basic layout with our kind of a side and our footer and header. So this is coming into play. And then we also have for this large screen, we've got this laid out so that um, it's a horizontal nav. All right. All right, let's take a look here now at number nine. So this is where we're going to set up that hamburger uh, toggle 
that, and then we'll have a hamburger to open up the nav and an X to close it. And if we look back at our index HTML, um, you can see that in the header we have a toggle open, and that uses the hamburger code there. That 9776 gives you the three horizontal lines that we call hamburger. And then we have a toggle close, and there we're rendering an X. So when we're in the open state, we'll see the X, and we'll click on it to close close our toggle. And when we're um, in the closed state, we could click on that uh, hamburger. And what will happen there, if you can recall, is we have an href attached to hash nav. And hash nav means id equals nav. So what happens when you have an anchor tag and you is you that href is the target. It's referred to as the target. So when I click on that, what I can do is activate CSS that uses the um, the colon target pseudo, pseudo selector. So what you're seeing here is that in a small screen, so less than 599 pixels, the normal nav will be hidden. So this right minus 340, we've, we've created a nav that is only 300 pixels wide. It's got a fixed position of top zero, bottom zero, which means that when you have top zero, bottom zero, it's taking up the full height of the screen. So that's one of the tricks for, for making something take up the full height. So it stretches from top to bottom with the fixed top zero, bottom zero. And then the width of it is 300 pixels. So that's going to be our, you know, our navigation on a small screen. Um, and then we are positioning in it, positioning it minus 340 to the right, which means that you won't see it. It's going to be off screen 340 pixels. But then what we do is we, when you click on this hamburger, it activates the target pseudo selector of hash nav. And the transform is telling it translate x, which means the horizontal direction. So y is the vertical, x is horizontal, is to translate at minus 340px. And a minus on a translate x will, sh will shift you to the left. So right, so normally it's positioned off, so you can't see it off of the little area that it's rendering in. And then when you click on that hamburger, it moves it back on. And then the close and open, those are styling. So the, the open maps to our hamburger and the close to our X. So these are styles that we are giving our hamburger. So normally it's just going to come out, you know, a little tiny character. It's a font. Both of these are fonts. And we're just, you know, giving it some style. We're removing underlines for the anchor tag. And we are um, giving it some color and some size and padding. So, so those are what we are doing with this. Now, remember, we already, the toggle was all about just um, displaying this, uh, displaying these two things. So uh, in the last in the last number eight, we, we put that toggle to display none. If we remove that and look at the code, um, we can see we will see the X. So these are the toggles. And um, you can see the little hamburger. So in the last section, we actually hid those. And, right, and now in this number nine, we're going to activate the code that will get the rendering of the the menu in the smaller screen size. So all I'm going to do is grab this section, this media query for a small screen, and add it down to the bottom of this. And I will I will put a note here that says hamburger nav. So once this is in, when I when I test a smaller screen, I should start seeing some of this functionality. We're not fully styled yet, but let's just inspect this and I'm going to move this to the bottom and I'm going to click on my screen so right here we are at pixel 2 and if I click on that 
Ah, there we go. Still. Let's see, we'll refresh this. And and I think we we still need to do a little bit of styling. But we've basically got it activated now. And I think once we get the rest of our styling in place, we're going to be able to see this functioning properly. So this is um, an important part of getting our responsive web page is to get our our navigation so that it can use some of the expected formats for a smaller screen navigation. We don't have to change any of our content. We don't have to change our HTML. We just need to add this CSS. And we're going to continue to do some styling here um, that will help to get us all the way to where we want to be on this. All right, so that is setting up the hamburger nav. Okay, we're ready for step 10, and here we're setting up the masonry layout. Again, we, we did this in the Skills 2 project, and it follows the same um, pattern. So um, all of our articles and images, anchor tags, headers under Golden Mason will be styled here, and this should change the look of our home page. And the key to the column layout that sets this up is all in this golden mason right here. So we have a call count of three we're trying to get to with column width of 300 pixels. And then we've done some styling around um, to get some border radius, so get some curved um, uh, borders. And then just generally getting font size. And these, these numbers that you come up with for font size and margin and such, Generally, by looking at it and tweaking it in the dev tools, but they're provided for you here. So now that we have this, we get our three column layout. And when we um, go to a smaller um, device, we should get the, yeah, we're starting to see this respond better too. So now we have the vertical layout that we would want for the responsive um, layout. So that sets up Golden Mason. And now we've got a sides on two of our pages, the index page and the Fibonacci page. And we have just a little bit of styling here for that aside. We're just basically styling the font size here. So I can label that aside though. And that sets me up for number 11. And then on the footer, we're going to use that flex box, and we're going to be using space between. So the idea here is we want to get that uh, left and right pulling going on. Um, so um, if we look again at what's in the footer, we have um, this copyright. And so we're going to be styling, we have two list items in this copyright unordered list. And we want one to go to the left and one to go to the right. And we can achieve that with the space between and display flex. And then we're just removing bullet points and um, setting the, the font size. So now if we check, we should see that we've got those at, at, at the edges, the, the left and right. All right. All right, now we're going to add styling for social, for the social bar links. And if you look right now, we have our social bar. They're, they're just these little font awesome icons or links, so they change color when you click on them. They're really tiny. And what we want them to do is become a fixed link so that we're at, wherever we're scrolling, we always have access to our contacts, which we'll, we can get through our social links. So over here, let's say we, we set up social links. And I've already, we, you know, we tagged them as icon bar. And we've got some styling for Facebook and Twitter, just trying to match some of the colors that those brands use. Um, what else we've got in here? We're using um, position fixed to, to um, get them to adhere to the window. Remember, the fixed position allows it to 
to match the window, and we're just going down 1% from the top, 4% from the right. And then um, we're, we've got the three of them in a list and lined up with, you know, horizontally with inline block. So let's take a look at how that looks. I'm just pasting these in here. I hope you're taking time to look at these and verify, you know, remember how you use them in skills and then now to see them used in a different way. So we now we've actually got them sitting up here and there's a hover that's kind of gold there. And if I scroll, they just stay in that position. So this is a, a kind of technique you might use if you had a help link and you wanted your user always to be able to click on help or a social link because you wanted your user to contact you. So that is the, the use case for that. Okay, we have some credits on the home page, and these are over on the side here. We just want to make them look a little better. You know, the, the default for any link is going to be that blue underline, and then when you click on it, it permanently turns a different color um, until, yeah. So we want to style that, and we have a, we've uh, set up a class credit so we can get in and style the list and the list items and the anchor and the hover of the anchor. So this is more styling on credits. And that gives us this. So we have some, some look there. Um, the next one is to style the images on the Fibonacci aside. So if we look at Fibonacci, these are right now just kind of spread out and, and kind of pushing this um, main section over. So we want to give some dimensions on that. So I'm just going to label this Fibonacci aside and we'll give it some. So we're going to use flex column. So this is sending flex um, to 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 align vertically and when we use a line on that it's going to affect the um, the opposite dimension so if we're aligning in column if we're if we're flexing column remember justify content does the same direction align does the opposite so we're going to get them centered and just give them a height and a width so if we come now we see okay they look a little bit more readable and um, of course, you can't really read anything with that book. I mean, you might want to have a link that took you to a, a, a bigger image of that, you know, so your user could actually see it. But for this stylistic, you know, page, we're just going to leave it at the same size. Um, and then for the calculations on that page, so you can see this is this little section here where we're trying to show how... Fibonacci works. The sequence is that you know any any number is the sum of the two previous numbers, and we're just using some mathematical notation there, just basically using subscript, and then we have a phi character coming out there. So we also yes, we also have um, so let's say we have oh the calc table. So that was what we coded here, where we're just showing the progression the progression of values there. And so let's grab this calc table. And in this table, we're using um, border collapse so that we don't have any extra gaps between cells. We're doing some fonts and colors, um, some alignment. And then we're putting our caption on the top left with italics. So let's see, let's say. And this should spread this out. Okay, and we've got our odd even. So yes, you can see the nth child even. We're changing the color on the even child to be a different color. And that just gives us a more readable table. So that is our calc table. And then here's the math. So the math section is this little section up here where we show the math use. Simple math, really, but when you, you know, Coded, it looks a little more complicated. Um, so if we look at that now, we've kind of highlighted it and given it some contrast so you can see that 
f0, they start out the same, and then any fn is the previous value plus the previous, the, the, the one before the previous value, and then phi is just the current value divided by the previous value. So if we look at our table, that should match up. We have 1, and there's nothing nothing to divide by because the previous value is 0. And then we have 1 again, 1, and then we have um, 1 over 1, and then we have uh, 2 over 1, 3 over 2, 5 over 1.5, 8 over 1.7. And then we start to see the Fibonacci, num the Fibonacci uh, division sequencing ends up giving us phi, the actual golden ratio value. And as, as you keep doing this, it gets closer and closer to that number. So that's our math. All right, we're going to get into 18. And this is uh, doing some styling on the media page, which is where we're showing uh, we're using some iframes to embed some different types of media. So we have some audio media from, we have this interview on from NPR, and then we have three videos that, that talk about golden ratio from different aspects. Right now they're all just left aligned. So they're all using iframes, um, and let's just look at the HTML that we set up for this too. So we have an audio container, and then um, for each one of the YouTube, we have a frame container, which holds a responsive container. And then the responsive container holds an iframe. So we're doing quite a bit in here. And the first bit of styling here is on the responsive container. And so we're trying to make it so that our, our videos um, will, you, that we can have them fully displayed on a small screen and so we need to but we want to maintain the aspect ratio the height and width that's that's normally provided by YouTube so you know normally when you get that embedded um, that embedded code out of YouTube it's got a height and a width well that is a very specific height and width and so this is one of the tricks is you can calculate that ratio and use this padding top 56.25% on a container for the iframe, so this responsive container. And that can actually make your video able to look smaller. So like um, if I just start shrinking this window, notice how it kind of overflows and I can't see it. It just goes away. And that's what would happen on a smaller device too. And so we want to allow it to shrink with the be kind of relative to the screen size but we also want to maintain the ratio. So that's what this 56.25 percent. There are articles on this if you're interested. Um, and then again inside the actual iframe we just want to do get it positioned absolute and then you know notice relative on the responsive container so now we're able to shove it up into the top left and give it a height and width of, of 100 percent. So if we if we put this code in and we'll just talk about let's call this media we can deal with our media in a responsive way. So right now, you know, it's going to be stretched out to 100%, but if I shrink it, because I've got that little trick in there, I can get it down small and it will not lose its aspect ratio and it won't overflow. So that is what that number 18 is about. Now with 19, we're also looking at that media page and so those iframes, um, we're going to try to center them and give them a width so that they don't, you know, and this is kind of our marginato trick that will should center these and just have them take up 80% of the page. So they'll still respond and be responsive, but they're not taking up the whole page, which can be hard to see. For audio container, um, what we're going to do there, so if you look at what we have now for audio, they're kind of just sitting on top of each other. We're going to use a grid layout with the template columns, and this is this uh, this is going to allow us to this min max to make it automatically responsive. So when it gets down to 300 pixels, it'll you know the pixel screen size, it'll go to one fraction, which will basically put things on top of each other. 
Otherwise, um, we have a media query. So when it's um, up above 600, um, we're going to let it take up two fractions. And so this will allow them to, those two chunks, to be side by side at a large screen. But then when we shrink the screen, it'll pop underneath a bit. So that's what we want. So now if we, let's say I look at the, this is what it's going to look like on a phone. So, you know, it's not beautiful, I don't think, but it's it works and it allows you to continue to see all the content. It can be challenging working with iframes, and but they they are things you, that you might want to share. We're getting down toward the end and we're looking at the about page now. So on the about page, we've got, you know, this, this clickable comic that takes us to things that that don't fit the Fibonacci spiral real well. Um, although it's part of this grand flow chart um, called the, anyway, um, we want to do some styling on this page. It's, you know, it's, it's basically unstyled, just shoved to the left and what we're going to do. And so this is also reporting on what we've learned to code. And for you, if you want to write about, oh, I did this for a class project, or you know, however you want to, if you want to make it yours, talk about yourself, that's great. There's no, you can add content to that. But to give it a little style, um, we're not going to do a lot. We're just going to provide some margin, um, some font, and um, some width on the image. So this is in the About page. Okay, so that just kind of makes it look a little cleaner. If you want to do some additional styling on this page, I would I would love to see it. So go ahead um, on any of these pages, really. I mean, we're we're trying to achieve a certain look here, and so I will be looking for that. But you know, I'm also if you see a way to make things better, certainly that is worth doing. Um, so that is those are our to dos. I think now we're ready to just check this in for the final time. So we, if we look at our status, we can just uh, commit it. Um, probably not a good thing to use final. Nothing is ever really final. So let's see. OK, we'll get that pushed. And then we'll open up the GitHub project, and I'm just using the Control Shift P, Command Shift P to open up this VS Code command runner, and then I type in open. This opens up the Git project, and then right now, since I forked this, the um, SU Web Dev is there, and we're going to want to replace that. Don't leave that there because someone will click on that, and they'll say, "Oh, you did not do much with that." So, you're going to want to change that. But first, got to go to settings. To GH pages, choose master branch. If you have a DNS name, you want to enforce HTTPS. And then we just wait for it to publish. Sometimes it can take a while. Sometimes it can take a long while. So if this takes too long, I might stop the stop the tape there. That should work. So it's green background. And there it is, and I can push, go through it and have a look at it. I probably should, you know, inspect it, take a look at it, use my um, use my smaller nav bar. And I think this looks good. It's definitely a good thing to take a take a you know look at it before you turn it in. But once you have that, you can uh, grab the URL. And go back to your code page and edit and replace that SU Web Dev link. Okay, and I think that completes it. Then your user has the ability to see your code and see the results of it. All right, that's it.